Okay, so welcome to this new lecture. Um, um, in the last lecture, we started with the defect chemistry and defect equilibria in uh, ionic solids or in electroceramics. So, there we introduced the concept of defects, there are various kind of point defects such as vacancies, interstitial, substitutional ions etcetera. And uh, then we introduced the Kroger Wink notations, uh, where each defect whether charged or charged has a particular notation by which it is denoted. In the nutshell, if a defect is positively charged, then it is determined by, then it is denoted by a dot on top of it. Uh, so, for example, if uh, in case of oxygen vacancy, you write it V O double dot if it is completely ionized and we will in this course, we will assume that all the defects are completely ionized and uh, if it is a negatively charged defect such as metal vacancy, then it would have a dash. One dash would mean single charge and two dash would mean double charge and so on and so forth. And then we looked at various defect reactions, first of all the rules which govern the formation of defect reactions. Um, um, so, formation basically what it means is that formation of defects can be uh, interpreted via uh, reaction just like a chemical reaction. The thermodynamic basis we will establish a little later, but uh, um, so you if you write them like a chemical reaction, then what you have to do is that you have to maintain the side balance, mass balance has to be preserved and also since the solid is electrically neutral, the electrical neutrality has to be preserved. Um, and in this case, uh, if um, since we are treating uh, oxides as the main materials uh, in this defect chemistry module, um, we will treat oxygen vacancy as V O double dot, uh, it, assuming that it is completely ionized and a metal vacancy, if metal was M 2 plus, then it would be V M double dash, uh, if it was completely ionized. Uh, if, the, if the valence of metal is different, then it would be V M single dash or triple dash or uh, 4 dash depending on the valence of the material. And then we looked at what are the defects in stoichiometric solids, uh, assuming the case of MO as stoichiometric solid. So, the first important defect is Schottky defect. Uh, Schottky defect is nothing but formation of a metal and oxygen vacancy simultaneous formation. This does not disturb the stoichiometry of the material. So, so basically you have a pair of uh, two vacancies in a, in a given solid. Um, the of course, mm, the relative proportion of these vacancies will change if uh, <coughs> if you had materials like Al 2 O 3 or Ti O 2. So, that I would leave it to you to work out, um, but make sure that you maintain the charge and side balance uh, there. And another kind of important defect is Frenkel defect. Frenkel defect is uh, formation of either a metal interstitial coupled with formation of metal vacancy. Uh, complementary metal, metal vacancy or in case of anti Frenkel, it is formation of oxygen interstitial complemented by an oxygen vacancy. So, these are uh, these are the two most common defects uh, that occur in stoichiometric solids and third is intrinsic ionization, which is nothing but uh, excitation of electrons from the valence band to conduction band giving, giving rise to a electron hole pair and this can occur in any material. And then we looked at defect in the stoichiometric, non stoichiometric solids. In reality, what happens is that most of these uh, materials operate either at high oxygen pressure or low oxygen pressure, and depending upon the uh, operating conditions, they, they are often non stoichiometric. So, there are two basic types one is oxygen deficient or metal excess, which is, uh, which is denoted as MO1 minus X or M1 minus YO, and second type is oxygen excess or metal deficient. And this is uh, written as either M O 1 plus x or M 1 minus y, sorry it should in the in the previous case it would be M 1 plus y o. And in the in, in this case it would be M O 1 plus x or M 1 minus y o. And then we took various cases for uh, starting with oxygen deficient or metal excess oxides. And the case 1 was uh, where we took uh, oxygen vacancies as dominating defect and we established uh, how the defects can be formed. You can have electronic compensation of defects or you can have ionic compensation. Basically, in both of these cases, you will have formation of oxygen vacancy coupled with either formation of electrons, quasi free electrons or uh, reduction of metal vacancy, uh, metal site, uh, metal on metal site. And then we looked at uh, the case when metal interstitials dominate. 
and in that case the formula would be for example in this case we have taken m o 2. So, here it would be m 1 plus y o 2 and as a result. Uh, so, here since metal is plus 4 we can see um, um, the metal will form an interstitial uh, followed by uh, complemented by reduction of metal on the metal side or if it was electronic compensation then it would give rise to 4 electrons. So, the difference in two cases is number of electrons created relative proportion of two defects and uh, examples of such cases could be n type conductors materials such as TiO2, zirconium oxide, cerium oxide, NB2, O5. So, now we will look at uh, the case of metal deficient oxides. So, we will start with So, in case of metal deficient oxides uh, as you can guess intuitively it would be either metal vacancies or oxygen interstitial if it was excess oxygen in case of uh, excess oxide. Uh, so, metal deficient would uh, in this case uh, be another case of uh, oxygen excess and formation in this case typically happens at the surface. Uh, we will deal with two cases and the first case is Case one is when uh, metal deficiency, metal vacancies are dominating defects. So in this case, uh, we represent the oxide. So we write the material as the formula is. M 1 minus y o as we have seen earlier and uh, if it was m o if it was uh, m 2 o or m o 2 then it would be different of course and where y represents the extent of non stoichiometry and the possible defect reaction that would occur is. So, defect reaction would be so you have since it is a case of metal deficiency. So, you have oxygen coming out uh, oxygen coming in oxygen goes to oxygen site, but if it was so um, we are taking the case of M O type which means for uh, now you have to maintain the site balance. So, you create one oxygen site where the oxygen goes complementing that you have to have a metal site, but since this is a metal deficient oxide you will have vacancy of metal. Now, this we can see of metal since it is a MO form it would be doubly negatively charged double negative charges. Now, this can be complemented in this case for, for example, by formation of two holes. So, this is your electronic compensation. Uh, so, basically you have creation of holes and as a result of creation of holes just like in the previous case this forms a p type conductor and examples of materials which show this characteristic would be uh, your uh, so materials like NiO, FeO, COO, etcetera. So, most of these transition metal oxides they show this characteristic. Now, this is electronic compensation, right? If you have ionic compensation, this would mean half O2 OO complementary metal side which is vacant. Now, unlike in the previous case where metal uh, reduction occurred, here you may have metal oxidation. oxidation. So, metal on metal side if it was oxidizing to plus uh, extra plus 1 state then this would be 2 mm dash. So, basically what it effectively means is that this is equal to 2 of m 3 plus. So, metals so basically what it means is, is that oxidation of m 2 plus to m 3 plus. Now, you can also have from m 2 plus to m 4 plus in that case only one side will be 
oxidized. So, this is the basis of ionic compensation of electronic compensation in these materials. Now, uh, typically what you will find these materials are susceptible to having extra holes. So, metal vacancy is uh, often complemented by creation of extra holes giving rise to a p type conduction behavior in these materials. Now, we will take the second case. Second case is when um, um, uh, you can have oxygen interstitial as dominating defect. So, in this case what happens is that now how do you represent these materials? So, formula would be M O 2 plus x since you have extra oxygen um, and so extra oxygen in another way means you have deficiency of metal and the way these uh, this happens is half O 2. So, here the oxygen does not go to oxygen site rather it goes to interstitial site. So, it goes if it goes to interstitial site you do not need to create any kind of vacancy if it goes to interstitial site and if it is completely ionized it will have 2 double dashes O i double dash plus formation of 2 holes. So, this would be your again this would give rise to p type conductors I am choosing whether it is M O or M O 2. Uh, based on the cases in which each of these defects are observed. So, the choice of so the basis of choosing whether M O or M O 2 for particular case is entirely based upon type of materials which show this behavior. An example is like U O 2 plus X which is uranium oxide. So, again this is your electronic compensation ionic compensation would again mean oxidation of metal. So, in principle it is also possible. So, so, ionic compensation would mean plus m m uh, dot. So, two of the metal sides will be oxidized, but again as I said in these in both of these cases and the materials prefer to have uh, p uh, in the uh, prefer to be in the form of pre p type conductors um, by creation of extra holes. So, this is the basis for formation of um, uh, defects in non stoichiometric oxides. So, we have discussed uh, two of these cases and looked at the examples uh, whether it is oxygen excess or oxygen deficient. Uh, now, not only uh, you can have defects created by as a, as a result of uh, short key or de uh, Frenkel defect formation or electronic disorder formation, you can also have de and uh, as we saw because of deficiency or uh, excess of oxygen or metal, you can also form defects by dissolving impurities in these materials. Most of these materials, most of these ceramic materials they tend to contain some amount of impurity in them depending upon their nature and their structure. Impurity incorporation often is governed by uh, the size of uh, interstices that you might have, the size of iron which is coming inside the host lattice etcetera. So, um, uh, but uh, if you look at for example, most of the refractory oxides none of them is uh, available in extremely pure form and also it is very difficult to it is commercially uh, it's exp economically very expensive to fabricate these materials in ultra pure form. So, as a result they tend to have some sort of impurities in them. So, most of these impurities when they are present in the host lattice they also give rise to complementary defects. So, we will discuss this as uh, this part as dissolution of um, you can say impurities whether intentional or in unintentional or foreign cations assuming that most of these impurities are oxides as well uh, in an oxide.
So, here we will take, so you can have various kind of, so possibilities are various. So, for example, host material would be of MO type. So, now if you have impurities, now impurities can be BO or B 2 O 3 or B 2 O or B O 2 and so on and so forth. Now, if it was in substitutional impurity which means B replaces M on the metal side in that case you do not have any problem oxygen occupies the oxygen side and B occupies the metal side given that if their sizes are uh, uh, not too different. If the sizes were too different, then uh, the host lattice uh, does not accept the impurity that readily. As a result, the impurity um, is present uh, as a solid chunk of impurity inside the material than substituting because it gives rise to massive strain in the lattice. Uh, and it is not, but however, if the sizes were equivalent, then BO in MO no defects because the valence of B and valence of M are equal. However, when you have replacement uh, of uh, if, if you have dissolution of impurities in the form of B 2 O 3 or B 2 O or V O 2, in this case the cation which is coming into the host lattice has a different valence and these are called as aliovalent ions. In previous case it would be called as isovalent, in the previous case uh, it would be aliovalent. So, no defects because in the previous case the uh, you you would not form uh, any defects because of isovalent impurity. However, when you have aliovalent aliovalent impurity what it means is that impurity of different valence and by which you basically mean cation because oxygen uh, if you consider impurity as an oxide oxygen has same valence as oxygen. So, there is no problem there, but cation has profound effect on the uh, type of defects that you will create. So, let us take the case of uh, dissolution of. So, suppose um, here we take uh, example. So, uh, the host the parent oxide or the host oxide is parent oxide is M O and the foreign oxide is um, let us say in this case A 2 O 3. So, what are the scenarios which are possible? You can have various scenarios. For example, if you if you have uh, now in, the, in, in, in these cases what will happen is A will typically go to M site. So, as a result you will have either creation of some of the um, um, metal vacant sites or you will have creation of uh, um, some other charges. So, let us see what these things are. So, let us say first is um, case 1. So, in this case the first case is let us say the impurity atom A goes to the metal site. So, what it do? So, you have dissolution of case 1 is A goes to M site M site and so let us say what it happens is here. So, A 2 O 3 going to going into M O lattice let us say both of A goes go to M site and both of the A's have gone to M site what it means is that the valence of A is plus 3 valence of M is plus 2 as a result the 
A which is going to M site is going to have extra plus 1 charge which is denoted by a dot. So, 2 A M dot plus let us say since 2 A's are going to 2 M sites the uh, 2 uh, to maintain the site and mass balance 2 of the 3 oxygens here go to oxygen site. So, which means they maintain the site uh, balance of M O which is the parent lattice extra oxygen goes out half O 2. So, extra oxygen does not stay inside. So, this is this is balanced in terms of mass and site, but how about the charges the electrical neutrality you have now plus 2 charges here these plus 2 charges have to be compensated. So, these 2 charges here are compensated by creation of 2 electrons. So, this is your electronic compensation um, and giving rise to quasi free electrons. So, this is case 1. Case 2. Now, here again you have A going to A site, but in this case all the 3 oxygens occupy oxygen site. So, let us see what happens here. So, A 2 O 3. So, both the A's go to M site having one positive charge at each site plus all 3 oxygens go to oxygen site. Now, both the A's have gone to M site all the 3 oxygens have gone to oxygen site. So, mass balance is fine, but what about the site balance? Parent lattice has 1 f 1 m site for O site. Now, here you have created 3 O sites. So, for 3 3 3 of these O sites you need to have 3 of m sites and you are filling only 2 of them, which means 1 of the O sites which is created as a result of 3 oxygens going to oxygen sites you will have 1 metal site which would be vacant. So, you will have V m having two negative charges. So, now this is balanced site and mass wise as well as charge wise. So, this is another possibility that could happen in uh, uh, these um, when you when you put A 2 O 3 impurity in M O solid. So, these are two cases when you have a dissolution of foreign uh, oxide into a host oxide of M O type let us say. Now, you can also have other scenarios. Other scenario for example, is Suppose the parent oxide was oxygen deficient to begin with. So, uh, here assume that the parent oxide is oxygen deficient, it already had oxygen deficiency. So, then what? Now, you have you have A 2 O 3 going into uh, the M O lattice plus you had V O's present there. Now, what is going to happen to these V O's? So, both the metals so you had 2 A's go to M site. Now, what since you had one oxygen site already vacant and you are going to create 2 for these all the 3 oxygen occupy oxygen site. So, now what has happened is the oxygen vacancy which was present to uh, which was present in the solid to begin with has taken for care for one extra oxygen as a result you do not create any other defect in the uh, material. So, this would be case 3. So, here uh, the it is balanced site wise as well as you have charge wise valence as well you have two positive charges on the left and two positive charges on the right. And you can take case 4, case 4 would be assuming that M O already had already is of P type which means it already has lot of holes inside it. So, uh, how do you do how do you do now? So, you have A 2 O 3 
A 2 O 3 plus some holes were present let us say I am not going to I am going to balance this reaction later on. So, both the A's go to M site two positive charges. Now, here in this case what happens is since you had already holes present and let us say two O O's and half O 2 one of the extra oxygen goes out since you have to maintain the side balance. So, here I do not create any defect on this side all I do is that I make it 2 H plus just to balance it electronically and now you also have side balance and this is another kind of reaction that would be possible if the material was of P type to begin with. So, in the previous uh, slide we looked at uh, when the material was stoichiometric it did not have any defect to begin with then what is the scenario. So, you can have creation of a metal vacancy or creation of two extra electrons or alternatively if the metal was already oxygen deficient or contained holes to begin with then these holes or oxygen vacancies could be compensated by presence of these impurities. So, uh, as, a, as a homework you can do for example, as an exercise you can discuss dissolution of A 2 O in M O and understand the the defect formation So, this I will leave it to you to work out yourself and that will make it clear uh, uh, what happens when uh, you put oxides of different valence in uh, parent uh, lattice. So, uh, I will just leave it to you at the moment. Um, the solution of this uh, I will provide these will be provided in extra uh, sheets or some reference will be provided for these if you want to go through them. So, <coughs> So, this has established uh, so, so, so far what we have seen is how the defects what kind of defects are there, uh, how they are form in, formed in stoichiometric solids, how the defects are formed in non stoichiometric solids where you have either metal deficiency or oxygen excess or metal excess or oxygen deficiency and uh, what happens when you dissolve either intentionally or unintentionally an impurity which is typically an oxide in a parent lattice and this particular material impurity material has different valence cations as compared to the host lattice. So, uh, I hope that now it is clear how the defects are formed, but the question now is uh, I said in the beginning of the lecture that uh, these defects are present in the solid thermodynamically, but the question now arises how what is the equilibrium concentration for these defects, how can we work it out. Uh, there is a thermodynamic basis by which we can work out the equilibrium concentration of these defects especially the intrinsic defects. Now, here we are going to talk about intrinsic defects you have two time two kind of defect one is intrinsic defect which is the defect which is created as a result of um, either non stoichiometry of the solid or or uh, um, uh, short q or Frenkel defects. Second type of defect is ex extrinsic defect which is created as a result of impurity incorporation in the material. So, these two are two different cases. So, here we will look at what is the equilibrium concentration of intrinsic defects in a given uh, material. So, <coughs> what we will do is that concentration of intrinsic defects. So, let us consider with the uh, for example formation of uh, let us say Frankel defect 
in a in a material mx so uh, the the material we take is is of mx type uh, which means m and x valencies are same and let us say the dominating defect is is Frenkel defect. So, if it was a Frenkel defect, then I can write this as m m plus x x as m i plus v m plus x x. So, you have side balance, because you have one uh, an ion site and one cation site. You have charge valence, the interstitial carrying two charges is balanced by two negative charges on the metal vacancy site. Uh, so, this is your defect reaction. Now, when you form the defects, what happens thermodynamically? Thermodynamically, the system had a free energy before the defects were formed. Okay? So, imagine the crystal having no defects, it has certain free energy. Now, defects want to form, once the defect form, there is a free energy change associated with that. So, and each defect is going to have its own energy formation okay, form, or the, you, are going, you need to spend some energy in forming the defect. So, what is that energy balance? So, let us say if, if you form um, number of defects that are formed are, are n and the energy expense per defect let us say is delta g f. Okay. Uh, so, basically per defect per defect pair you can say, because here you are going to form a pair. So, the moment you form metal interstitial you have metal vacancy. So, energy expense per pair is per defect pair is delta g f. So, what is the net free energy change? So, delta g from a uh, 0 defect state to let us say n defect state is equal to g minus um, g naught, g naught is the defect free state. So, this would be n delta g f. So, this is your enthalpy change minus at a given temperature at that particular temperature, we are, we are assuming that here temperature and pressure are constant. At this particular temperature, what is the change in the entropy, because the moment you create the defects inside a material you are going to lead to uh, is going to is going to lead to change in the configurational entropy, which is delta S c and which is going to be a positive quantity, because you are going to introduce defects, which means you introduce a disorder inside the material and uh, as the disorder increases the entropy change entropy always increases. So, so this is what is uh, the basic uh, thermodynamic uh, free energy change that is going to happen when you form n Frenkel defect pairs, uh, each defect pair having uh, energy of formation of delta g f and, and, uh, and minus of that entropy term, which is uh, a positive term um, because of uh, increase in the entropy. Now, when you plot this delta g, which is going to happen with respect to n, so, how do you, uh, the, the, why we are going to do this? We are going to do this because we want to find out what is the equilibrium concentration. Now, equilibrium concentration will be achieved when this free energy change will be minimum. You can for keep forming defects. Let us say you form n 1 defects, n 2 defects, n 3 defects, n 4 defects, etcetera, etcetera. Now, all these concentrations are not going to stable. Only one particular concentration is going to be stable at which delta g is going to be minimum. So, the plot of delta g if you plot delta g versus n, let us say the n defects, it is going to be something like this. You can simulate this graph as well and this minima will correspond to equilibrium concentration, because here this change in free energy would be maximum, which means the free energy of the crystal after formation of these many defects will be minimum. So, uh, 
what we now need to do is that we need to differentiate that particular equation which we wrote in the previous slide with respect to n and find out what is the equilibrium concentration of defects. So, let us do that. So, now for to do that first we need to work out what is the uh, change in entropy. Change in entropy can be written as delta S c can be written as k l n w, where k is nothing but your Boltzmann constant. and w is is w is nothing but number of ways in which defects can be arranged inside the solid on these lattice sides so the moment you def put defects you you can you can put defect in the way you want it but what is the optimum way so, uh, and, and of course, there are going to be many different possible ways. So, let us work out what is the uh, number of ways in which you can put these defects on the metal sides, uh, uh, sorry on, uh, on, the, on the atomic sides or in the lattice. Uh, so, let us say uh, now when you form, when you form these Frenkel defects, so Frenkel defect would mean you have metal vacancy and you have metal interstitial. Now, let us say uh, we are saying total number of defect is equal to n, this is going to be equal to number of vacancies n v and this is going to be equal to number of interstitial which is n i. So, just by equality and just by looking at the uh, defect reaction itself, this is very simple. So, number of differential defect pairs n is equal to number of uh, uh, metal vacancies and number of metal interstitials. So, <coughs> now, as you, now assume that total number of uh, lattice sites is equal to capital N. So, in this case if, if these are the numbers which you have what is the number of possible ways in which you can arrange the vacancies. So, so, uh, if, if, so let us say number of possible ways to arrange the vacancies, let us say that is written as W V. Okay. So, this, so W V is given as <coughs> factorial N divided by N minus N N V factorial multiplied by n v factorial. So, uh, so this is your w v. Now, similarly what is the number of possible ways to arrange the uh, uh, interstitials. So, in case of interstitials, uh, we can define this as w n sorry w i and this w i is again given as since you have uh, similar number of uh, uh, interstitials and vacancies this would be n factorial divided by capital n minus n i factorial multiplied by n i factorial so this we have so far worked out individual uh, ways for arranging vacancies as well as interstitial. So, what is the total number of configurations? We define that as w and this is nothing but product of w i into w v. 
So, as a result, we can work out what is the entropy change. The entropy change is entropy change is delta S c that is equal to k l n multiplied by n factorial divided by n minus n i factorial into n i factorial and again n minus n v factorial into n v factorial. Now, since we know that n v is equal to n i, so we can write this as So, it would be 2 k l n n factorial is equal to n. We can write this as n minus n factorial into n factorial. Okay. Now, to solve this uh, log of factorials, you need to use a Stirling's approximation. So, which is Stirling's approximation is nothing but if you have l n n factorial, then this would be n l n n l n n minus n. So, if you apply this, uh, this to our equation, what you can work out is delta S c would be equal to 2 k n l n n minus of n minus n l n n minus n minus of a small n into l n small n. So, this is the expression that you work out after working out uh, um, both w i and w uh, v and then eventually w and substitute in the expression for change in the entropy. So, uh, so now the net free energy change, so the total free energy change that we wrote earlier delta G that would now be equal to n delta G f, okay, this is the first term minus of T into 2 k into capital N L n n minus capital N minus small n L n capital N minus small n minus of small n L n n. So, this is your expression for uh, free energy. So, this delta G now you can write it as um, n delta G f minus of 2 k t into n if you can rearrange if you rearrange these what you will get is n l n n divided by n minus a small n plus small n into l n of n minus small n divided by small n. This is what you are going to get if you do it if you rearrange these. Okay. That is very simple you can just you just need to open this up. So, uh, that will give you the um, form. So, if you just do this n l n n l n n minus n l n n minus n. So, you can take the n out make it l n n divided by n minus n and this would become plus. So, plus n l n n minus n minus small n l n small n. So, you take out small n and then this would become l n of small n minus small n divided by small n. So, this is very simple to do. Now, uh, at equilibrium we have we have already talked about the equilibrium at equilibrium at equilibrium concentration of defects we can say del of delta g del n at constant temperature and pressure is equal to 0. 
and we can also assume since number of defects in the solid are going to be much smaller than the number of lattice sites. We can say uh, since and n is very small as compared to n. So, n minus a small n is almost equal to capital N as I, as, and th that you will see when we calculate these numbers. So, using these two formalisms, now you can simplify this equation further. So, when you differentiate what you will find is uh, this. So, if you do that exercise and replace um, uh, capital N minus small n to be equal to cap almost equal to capital N, then you will find as small n. So, this would lead to. So, if you differentiate the free energy equation with respect to n, this would lead to it is a very simple differentiation. So, this would lead to exponential of minus delta g f divided by 2 k t. So, so this is an important expression. So, watch this what this tells you is that. So, vacancies formation of vacancies is exponential function of uh, energy expense per pair and temperature and as you can see now here as the temperature increases this number will increase and as this number increases this number will decrease it is going to be much harder to form defect when you have low temperature and higher energy expense. Now, this delta g f can further be broken into delta h f minus t delta s v. So, this delta h h f is nothing but your enthalpy of defect formation and delta s v is nothing but. So, earlier we took the uh, configurational entropy change this would be your vibrational entropy change. Okay. So, if you do if you if you plug this in above equation so as a result small so small n by capital N will simplify to exponential of minus of delta H f minus of T delta S V divided by 2 k T and this can further be equal to exponential of delta S V by 2 k multiplied by exponential of minus delta H f by k t. Now, in most cases what happens is this uh, entropy change is very small. So, this can so this term is often neglected. So, since delta S V is often very small or negligible. So, exponential of delta S V divided by 2 k is almost equal to 1. So, n by n is equal to exponential of minus delta h f by 2 k t. So, this is your standard expression to calculate the equilibrium concentration of defect in an uh, uh, in a ceramic material or in an ionic solid. Now, this expression tells you that n is an exponential function of temperature and uh, enthalpy of formation. So, you can write so, so as temperature increases n increases and as delta h f increases n decreases. So, uh, so what you will see is that most of these ceramic materials they have appreciable intrinsic concentration uh, in, in, appreciable intrinsic defect concentration at higher temperatures at lower temperatures they do not con contain uh, significantly uh, larger number of defects. Similarly, delta h f delta h f is enthalpy of defect formation. So, 
which you can guess that a delta H f is nothing but ease of defect formation uh, represents the ease of defect formation. So, of course, materials with higher bond strengths are going to be form uh, find it much more difficult to form defects and uh, you will and similarly materials with higher temperature uh, they will have higher melting points they will have at one temperature lower defect concentration as compared to those with um, lower melting points because melting points are related to bond energies. For example, you can make comparison between um, magnesium oxide and uh, uh, sodium chloride. Sodium chloride <coughs> is a material with uh, um, so for instance, you can make a compare compare NaCl and MgO. So, MgO delta H f is almost equal to uh, 2.4 electron volt um, and in this case it is 7.7 .7 electron volt and this is directly related to T m. So, T m of uh, NaCl is about 802 degree centigrade in case of MgO it is about 28, 25 degree centigrade and these are. So, you can see that uh, MgO being a larger melting point compound because of larger bond energy it has larger uh, enthalpy of defect formation. So, as a result intrinsic defect concentration in MgO. So, at a at a given temperature uh, number of defects in MgO is much smaller than in NaCl and this is because of uh, higher defect formation energy in MgO as a result of higher bond energy. Uh, so, However, if you if you if we scale it to same homologous temperature, then uh, defect concentrations can be almost comparable. So, at same homologous temperature, of course, below the melting point of NaCl, um, so you can find that NaCl will have roughly two ppm defects, and MgO will have approximately. 0.4 ppm. So, they are more comparable when you talk about same homologous temperature, but the point here is uh, the effect of bond energies and the temperature. Uh, and however, uh, uh, so these defects are this is intrinsic defects. Now, in the previous expression, we worked out this expression for uh, uh, Frenkel defects. Similar expression can also be worked out for Schottky defects because there also you have pair of defects. So, there is no difference. So, uh, the only thing is that this will become uh, delta H s in Schottky defects. So, when we talk about NaCl and uh, MgO, it is delta H f is nothing but uh, for Schottky defect because both of the materials are prone to having short key defects. However, the uh, the derivation remains same and there is no change. So, we will we will take up the uh, we will we will we will finish here and we will take up the defect equilibria and uh, what is the thermodynamic basis of treating defect reactions uh, in the next class. Thank you.